Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Apex 2018 and I'm joined by three gentlemen to discuss cyber physical systems, the concept of connecting machines together, ultimately to produce added value in terms of process performance, better quality, uh, more efficiency. We've got Sean here from Panasonic, Joel from Co Young, and Wayne from ITW. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me. I'm going to start at this end with Sean and just go along the, um, along the panel and tell me a bit about how you see this idea of cyber physical systems with feedback and feed forward loops uh, and how you're working with the other panelists here to achieve more. Uh, thank you, Phil. Um, yeah, in this world where you have fewer manufacturing engineers and folks that can actually control the process, you begin to learn over time as we work together that there's ways that these different machines can take data from one another and obviously be able to uh, reduce the amount of expertise that's required and, and enable the machines to do what they do automatically. Um, Panasonic, we work with uh, Ko Young in the past on various projects and we're working on a new project together with ITW which is very exciting for a very large company who is a goal of single digit DPM. And so we've been collaborating on this project amazingly successfully. And uh, what that has done for us is the fact that we have uh, the MPM printer printing, communicating with the Ko Young SBI, feeding information to our placement machines, and then even taking data from their pre-reflow AOI and also uh, taking that data to improve placement quality as well. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, this all happened over a brief amount of time, and uh, the truth is, is that we're seeing the fruits of that labor, yeah. and it's really exciting. And hopefully, and, and I'm sure that the customer will too. Joe, we've talked numerous times about the importance of good data in and domain expertise. That's that's really important. But then it becomes this actionable data, and this connectivity allows you to do that. Tell me a bit about how you guys are working together to do that. Sure. Sure. So. First of all, we, we started our relationship with Panasonic probably two, two and a half years yes. ago. This is the third Apex, I yes. think, right? Yep. And with the MPM folks going back uh, certainly before last Apex, yep. right? Yep. And we showed some level of the next level closed loop at the show last year. So uh, fortunately, we've had kind of uh, simultaneous, simultaneous projects working with both, which I think has allowed us to uh, accelerate the, the uh, evolution and, and uh, uh, bringing to fruition the, the goals of the customer that we're currently working with together. But uh, uh, by and large, I, again, it's us providing information to the mounter in a pre-reflow feedback location for positional information missing. So now we can make adjustments potentially or set alarms initially for those types of anomalies. Similarly with the MPM printer, being able to establish the, the baseline best uh, optimum results, or, or I should say settings for the printer prior to starting a, a, a production run, yep. and then monitoring that information as that, uh, as that run is being uh, exercised, and again, setting alarms, providing feedback to the, uh, to the operators for, for things that, that need to be adjusted, and eventually automatically adjust those yeah. things, similar to the potential with, uh, with the mounter. Yeah. And I think that automatic adjustment is really important. Wayne, when you look at it from your point of view, having that feedback loop into the printer and being able to do that automatically is important. And what Sean said about the way the, the skill set of the operator is changing, we're looking at operators to be able to move around to different places on the line. So we can't have the guy that just stands and tunes the, the printer anymore. It needs to be much more automated. Yeah, that's uh, the way we uh, we uh, uh, did this uh, uh, collaboration with uh, with Ko Yang's team is uh, so the Ko Yang team can uh, uh, measure a certain amount of boards and get the test results and uh, come up with the uh, uh, set of optimized key printer parameters uh, based off their AI system in the running in the background. So the operator can take this uh, uh, set of uh, optimized parameters entered. Uh, uh, into the printer, so you can you you, off, you have a, a great off you know to start. So this also potentially avoid the uh, the, the potential uh, uh, production disruptions down the road if you uh, you know uh, detect a certain 
uh, uh, the defects, then you would have to stop the production and uh, going back to the printer and, and, and see what's going on. So to have uh, the uh, right start is critically important. Uh, another piece, obviously, the, it's all about creating value for our common customers. So one of the key things our customers care about the most is the o overall OEE, right? Obviously, it ties to yeah. their, the the uh, the, the pro profitability, the true bottom line. So mm -hmm. this particular uh, the uh, optimization piece uh, helps improve the overall yield. So that's how we uh, help our customer improve their uh, bottom line. Yeah, and um, Sean, from from a point of view of a of an equipment manufacturer like you. Being able to connect to the various different parts in the line is very important. We've talked a lot this week about how that communication is done and, and the standards are around it. That seems to have really gained momentum this week, but it, seem, it seems to be getting to the point where I'm hoping we'll stop talking about it and it'll just be like electricity, Natural. it's always there. It's but it's got a way to go. The customer, after we demonstrated what we did last week, uh, they're a very engineering savvy company. And the guy who was in charge of the inspection process said, I want this on all of our lines. And this is a company that has many lines. And so they were so enthused by it. And the other thing I thought was interesting was, you know, we did baselining of trying to identify defects uh, prior to this, right? Because you want to know what's the improvement that we're realizing. Well, every day we would get a defect file in an Excel spreadsheet with missing data. And how do you take actionable activity to go and correct something when you would get it 24 hours later? There's really not a lot you can do. And plus it was uh, post reflow. So, you know, the reflow process can affect uh, the results as well. We're collaborating on being able to immediately show defects at our placement machine that are detected by the AOI, and the same is true with the other pieces of equipment in the line. And I just can't wait to see the benefits. I mean, I really truly believe that you can, through this process, achieve the types of yields the customers are trying to do it and without necessarily people even being involved. And you're right, it does need to become something which is so simple. And I think that'll be part of the challenge is even with communication protocol, how many PCs do we need to do this? All these different things, we need to work to the point where there's reduced infrastructure and it becomes very easy to do at the line. And I think that's where the next challenge will be. The communication and the results are already there, making it something that's easy for the customer and reduces the amount of infrastructure required is where I think the next step of this needs to go. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, we what we want to do is is have that data all in an action, actionable format and a format that that everybody can uh, that everybody can share and benefit. We mentioned uh, uh, ROI there and, and KPIs. That's a really important part. But it must be really nice for you to be able to not just say this is good, this is bad, stop, go this is what you need to do to improve the process. This is what you need to make things better. That's an important part of your ongoing strategy. Yeah, we, we really, you know, the whole uh, effort, I think, is ultimately to create a, uh, a self-healing line, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, it sounds like a lot, right? It sounds like a, sounds like a, a pretty tall task, but, yeah. you know, if we, can, <laughs> if we can get to the point where we, we establish that protocol, where we can't communicate with anyone who we need to communicate with and send the right kind of data, and have that be based on, again, statistically relevant uh, samplings and so forth, so our AI engines and, and, uh, and, and the mechanisms behind the scenes can, can quickly and accurately interpret that and, and provide that, that solution, um, I, I think the sky's the limit. I, yeah. think, I think we can attain those types yeah. of things because the data is going to be there, right? Yeah. We, we just have to, we have to manipulate it or, or analyze it is a better word. Yeah. Uh, in an automated fashion, yeah. quickly and correctly, and present that in a simple format. Right. Yeah. That's that's what the customer needs. That's, yeah. That's you know, that's, what's, that's where the value is. Just yeah. Just press play. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Wayne, Joe says the sky's the limit, and I wanted to ask all of you, what is the limit when we look at this level of connectivity, this level of collaboration and then we start to overlay technologies that are that are coming into the market like augmented reality like artificial intelligence like digital twins <coughs> how far are we away from that kind of utopian idea of of having a line that actually tells us what it's doing and tells us it's doing fine or it needs help rather than us having to constantly monitor it yeah so uh, from uh, our printer standpoint we have uh, 
uh, the universal uh, communication interfacing program we call OpenApp, uh, which enables machine to machine communication and machine to MES uh, uh, communication. So it's it's uh, it's um, which can be adapted by you know to be compatible with any protocols out there so that that helps the uh, flexibility and also it's open source so either us or our customers or third party can uh, take the uh, developers kit to uh, tailor it for any individual purposes so that that's I think we think uh, that that's a great uh, benefit to our uh, customers yeah and Joe from your point of view how long is it before I can say Alexa how's line three doing <laughs> Well, that's a great question. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that anybody can absolutely put their put their finger on that. But I will say, uh, from what I've seen this week, just from the response to the CFX uh, initiative and and uh, some of the energy that that's created, I, I think we're closer than than maybe we thought uh, not that long ago. Right? It, it seems to be moving uh, very quickly, uh, generating a lot more conversation for sure. And uh, I've talked with uh, uh, various people from some of the very prominent MES companies that are that are here uh, about their excitement yeah. and, and level of excitement to uh, to uh, to keep this thing moving forward fast. And the, the feedback that they're getting from their customers, uh, basically uh, pushing for that yeah. you know, soon. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's that's usually what gets things done, right? Yeah, you know, the customers are going to drive it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm hearing that all the time when I speak to the MS companies. Uh, they're demanding these things. They love that, that you guys are all playing nice together. They're really, they're really excited about that. Do you think this collaboration was really what was missing at the beginning of Industry 4.0, which is really now allowing us to kick on to the next point? I think it took a while for people to even grasp what does this mean and what is the potential. Yeah. And the reality is that uh, there are so many opportunities. I mean. There's things that we're doing process control, is, which is outstanding, but what about maintainability? When do I maintain? All these different various things that are areas that can be exploited. Mm. Uh, in addition to that, I think the one thing that we're missing is there's been a lot of emphasis on the MES side, but how do we create a common program that can be used if I'm the guy responsible for that line and i got to create a file that's going to work on NPM, it's going to work on Co Young, it's going to work on Panasonic. I think that's the area we also need to pay some attention to because we're very much interested in, obviously, the line is running, it's running efficiently, it's doing the full process control and all those other things. I think where we really need to focus next is on the front end. Yeah. And once we do that, then I think that you'll truly make this the utopian environment mm. that we need. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where we'll, part of the next challenge will be because uh, uh, doing what we're doing, being as, being as successful as we are, this operational aspect of it, we're doing what we need to do. It's the, the day when we can actually sit there and take recipe control and be able to have it proliferate across yeah. the line seamlessly. That's I yeah. think the missing piece that we need to focus on next. Yeah, and it's managing that digital thread so everybody's got what they want from it and, and that's going to add the real value. And you're right, five years ago when Industry 4.0 was, was discussed, most people didn't know what they were talking about, exactly. so hopefully we do now. Gentlemen, really good panel. Thank you very much for your, for your input and thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank, thank you. you. Nice job.